Hey, there we go. Oh. It's working now. Mm. Mm. What's going on with you? Should our audio be all the way up? No, no, no. Just leave it where where it is. It's at all the way up. So yes. We're going to the yellow. Does that ever happen? No, that's fine. That's fine. Should be okay. Hope so. Hey everybody. Uh, okay, so today Brady, who's coming, is doing. Hey, dog, dog, doggies. Are you cooking dogs? Don't cook dogs. Like hot is dogs it legal are to like eat dogs in the U.S. Like, is that is that a law? I don't know. Okay, that's a great question. Yeah, there are certain animals that are meant for eating, other animals that are meant for companionship. You don't want to make a companion out of a food animal. Don't start hanging out with cows and pigs. They're for food. Yes. Yeah. For you and for for everyone. And on the you know the other hand, do not eat companion yes. animals. Yeah. Or people. Or people. Companion yeah. people. Yeah. People have done that. People. Bert, what are you doing today? I'm doing factoring and foil. And I'm doing transitions. Ooh. But I'm doing it after he's doing factoring and foil. Can you post on Discord? I did. Right. All right. Should we get to it? Encryption. Do you have questions? Thoughts? Concerns, suggestions, tips, reminders. Well, actually, um, Encryption did ask what's cooking. Yes, I have You one. have one. Very good. We like one question. One. Don't One be afraid to tell us. the loneliest question that you'll ever ask. That is right. Two is similar to one, but it's double the number. Hey, number yes. Two times one is also two. That's right. A lot of twos. What do we got here? You thinking uh, you can challenge us? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, let's do this. This looks fun. Oh, this is kind of fun. For you. Yeah. All right. Can I draw it? Yeah, if you want. Boys, boys. Levi's gonna draw it. And Bert's gonna make it. Is here. I crush. What's up? Nice memes. I that crush. seems like it's topical. I thought I killed you. <laughs> Did you? No, I, I didn't think that. Should I tell him about my dream? Mm, yeah. No, I'll Ooh. talk about it later. What else have we got here? So we got a radius that goes to A, which is, here we go. This is point A? Yeah. Which is rad 3, 1? Yep. Is okay. that it? Yep. Oh, B is, is right here. B is right. right there, yep. Um, the measure of angle AOB is pi over A radians. What's the value of A? So this angle theta. Here? Yep. All right, so it tells us that theta is pi over a. The question is, what is a? Um, what's going on here? It's been your day. I gotta look at nice memes. Um, Brandon is not here today. Brandon will be back next week for a very special stream. Very, very What day is it today? Stream. Thursday? Today's yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have to figure out what angle this is. All right, you can probably tell that this is in terms of radians. When you have an angle that has a pi in it, it's in terms of radians. If you're not familiar with radians, that's going to make this uh, question extremely difficult. If you are familiar with radians and you know the unit circle and some of the reference angles on the unit circle, you're going to be in better circumstances, OK? So the deal with the unit circle is that you can make you use the terminal ray of these angles, and you make yourself a little right triangle. So let's blow this thing up. Not with fire and explosions, but rather just make it larger. So our angle is this right here. A is root 3 comma 1, which means the x value of A, which is this distance here, is root 3. And then the y value is 1. So this is 1. If you ever have yourself a right triangle and you've got two side lengths, you might as well just go ahead and finish that sucker out and do Pythagorean theorem to find your, your third side length, your hypotenuse. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's get a new color. I like new colors. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Yes, my lord. Yes. So a squared would be root 3 squared, which was going to be 3, plus 1 is equal to c squared, which means that 4 is equal to c squared. So 2 is equal to C. Fantastic. That's 2. OK? If that's 2, let's talk about some, some, um, some trig that we know based off of this. 
All right, sine of theta in this case. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be one over two, one half. Right there, I actually know, if you know unit circle reference angles really well, you're actually already done. Um, but let me just put these other ones up here anyway. Cosine theta would be root three over two, and then tan theta is going to be uh, oa, oh, uh, tan. Tan, opposite over, opposite over uh, no, opposite over adjacent. Opposite sorry. over adjacent. Toa, that's fine. Opposite over adjacent, root three over one. So sorry. No, I'm sorry. One over root three, which you end up. Okay, one over root three, and you rationalize by multiplying by root three over root three. Okay, you end up getting root three over three. Root three over three. Fantastic. Okay, there is only one angle that has these characteristics on a unit circle. Okay, you are at the of the reference angles. There's these dashes that you can draw on a unit circle. This first dash is one half. The second dash is root two over two, then you have root three over two. The sine of one half that this angle is, we didn't really draw it that well, it would be kind of you know halfway up, means that it's 30 degrees. It's gotta be. 30 degrees is the only angle that has a sine of one half. You kind of have to recognize that, or you can use inverse trig if you want, okay? You can have your calculator figure this out for you. If you wanna solve this equation for theta, you is take, is this, uh, I think this is a no calculator though. It's, a number, it's number 19, it's open-ended. Okay, so if this is no, no calc, calc, then yeah. you've gotta know this off the top of your head. That the angle that has a sine of one half is 30 degrees, okay? Um, one thing you could recognize here is that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle um, because the opposite is half of the hypotenuse. So a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which you have on the formula sheet at the very beginning, uh, if this is 30 and this is 60, the formula is x, 2x and x root 3 and this matches that formula where our x value is 1. So this is a 30 60 90 triangle which means that theta is 30 degrees but that is not in radians and we, they want it in radians. So theta uh, it's going to be pi over 6 but if you want to convert this into degrees sorry into radians you want to multiply by the conversion rate is pi over 180. That's the conversion rate from radians to degrees or from degrees to radians. In this case, we're converting from degrees to radians. So you multiply these together, you're gonna to get 30 pi over 180, which is gonna be simplified to pi over six. So your A value is gonna be six. Okay, yeah, as you can tell, there's a lot of previous trig comfortability that you have to have for this to come to you. Um, encryption, what are your thoughts? Any questions on this? Does all that make sense? Uh, did you enjoy it? I, will, I, know, I had fun with this. Yeah, I see that now, thank you. Oh, fantastic, all right. Uh, in that case, we're gonna continue. So Levi, Yes. I'm doing foiling and factoring. You are. Very good. Foiling. I'm erasing that for you. Oh, thank you. Like the good partner I am. Very good, very good. This is just ideal human partnerships. We're People help each other out. Don't eat your partners. Don't eat Don't your Don't eat your partners. Correct. Give your partners a dog. Every day. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of dogs over the course of a year. Specifically 365. 365 and a quarter dogs. Well, actually, hundreds and hundreds would be wrong, because that would mean at least 200 and at least 200, which would be 400 dogs. So uh, you could not say hundreds and hundreds and mean 365. Unless you were referencing the same hundred. I don't think that's how that works. Because No, well, the, the original phrase was hundreds and that same hundreds. Hun no, it's not. Why would it yeah, be that's that what same they, that's what oh, they used to say. They used to say hundreds and that same hundreds. Yes. Okay. And now that same is implied. Right. Have you seen the movie with me? No. I'm sorry, not with me, with you? Uh, I saw it alone. You saw it with you alone? Yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that had Robin Williams, right? You're thinking of Flubber. Ah, Flubber with Robin Williams. Yeah. That's right. It's actually called Flubber with Robin Williams. A lot of people don't really, they just think it's called Flubber. Well, it's in, in English. In English. Okay. Oh, well done. iCrush. Oh, yeah. So iCrush subscribed, supposedly. We never got any sort of notification with regards to your sub, iCrush. When did this happen? Yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. But all I got was a, a very sad message from iCrush saying, I subscribed. Nothing happened. <laughs> Right, because I wasn't there. Yeah. I crush, your wish is my command. <clears throat> <laughs> well done, I crush! Well 
well done! Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Are you going to need the overlay? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay, I'll get off. I crush. Did that. Reach your expectations to go over them. I had a good time. Factoring and foiling. Factoring plus foil is equal to fun. That's what fun is, factoring and foiling. Oh, great. i got to do this again. Uh, where's the mouse? There it is. Monsieur Le Vie, Paul le Francais. App is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. And is for any time, anywhere at all. Down here is the deep blue sea. Take it, Plankton. F is for fire that burns down the whole town. U is for uranium. Bombs. And is for no survivors. Shh. When you're Plankton. That's not what fun is all about. Wait. Uh. Yes. Is that? That's kind of a an imperative to say Monsieur Levi par français. Well, no, it's not. It just means Levi speaks French. Hmm. It doesn't necessarily... Is that a question? Because then it should be... Oh, no. That's right. That's a question. But then I would invert. Fantastic. All right. Foiling. Foiling is what you do when you multiply two quantities together and the quantities have multiple quantities inside them, separated by pluses and minuses and things like that. Um, foiling is an acronym, and it stands for all the different multiplications you have to do here. All right, this is essentially distribution. So like if I had four times x plus six, I have to distribute four into both of these terms. I have to spread the love that is the magical four into both of these. So I'm gonna get four x plus 24. Four x plus 24, oh, man. I feel like my writing is far better than it actually looks. Um, four x plus 24. All right, that's the same thing that's happening with foil, except we have to distribute both quantities into the second set of parentheses, basically. So five, we have to distribute that into x minus three. We also have to distribute x into x minus three. Okay, so in no particular order, foil just reminds you which ones you need to do. So we have first, outer, inner, last is what that stands for. So, put that over here. We got foil and you got fanboys, and fanboys is not related to foil. So, foist, outer, inner, last. First, outer, inner, last. Our first terms are x and x. Multiply those together, you get x squared. Our outer terms are x and negative 3. Keep in mind, this is a negative 3 because we're subtracting it, which is going to be minus 3x. Then the inner terms, 5 and x, this is a positive 5, so it'll be plus 5x. And the last terms, positive 5 times negative 3, which is minus 15. We can combine like terms here because there's two x terms. So when you do that, you get x squared plus 2x minus 15. This has been foiled. All right. Blast. Foiled again. Ha ha. Well right. done. Right? Yes. Well done. Just right? like that. Do you like that? No. Yes. Okay. That's foil. I'm done. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Calm down. Calm down. So let me, uh, let me show you a little something. Let me tell you what not to do. Let's get rid of this. I got, what are you doing up here? I was gonna erase. Well, you said come up here. I did not say that. You did. You actually did. No. You did. Well, if I did, I didn't mean it. How am I supposed I to I have know? literally nothing that I need you for right now. Here's what I do not want you to do. If you see yourself doing this, slap yourself on the wrist and never do it again. Let's say you see something like this. X plus nine squared. This does not equal X squared plus 81 because all you do is you just distribute the squared to both of them. Okay, no. You don't. You can do that when there's not a plus or minus. If you have something like this, x squared times y, and there's a squared, then you can distribute the exponent. That's fine. There's no plus or minus here, okay? So this is gonna be x to the fourth times y squared because you multiply the exponents and y has an invisible one. But here, if you actually write out what we're doing, you'll realize why you can't do what I showed you. X plus nine squared, anything squared means the thing times itself. So this would mean 
x plus 9 times x plus 9. There's four different multiplications you have to do here. This is, this is right for foiling. You have to foil it. That's the only way that you can multiply this. Um, or at least, I mean, if you know the pattern, then you don't need to do every single one. You probably know where this is going. Anyway, um, yes, so this does not equal x squared plus 81 because it has a plus in it. If you have a plus or a minus, you have to do foiling. If not, be my guest. Go ahead and distribute that exponent to everything, okay? This is a big mistake that they will try to get you on every single time, and you cannot let them, okay? Just give them the same mistake right back by doing it correctly. That'll, that'll show that, okay? So there's some factoring pat. I'm sorry, there's some foiling patterns that we can talk about. Um, here we go. And they're kind of fun. I like them. Are they flirty? They're fun and flirty, and they're free. You can use them whenever you want. So there's no reason why you shouldn't do these factoring patterns all the time. I've done them at least five times today. I should have let this dry. Now this is wet. Ugh. Very good. Very good. OK. First factoring pattern. First factoring pattern. Here we go. Yes. There we go. First factoring pattern. Let's talk about x plus a. I'm going to keep it general here so you can see what the pattern is. You're taking x and you're adding some number. Let's do FOIL with this. This is going to be x plus a times x plus a. So we have x times x, which gives us x squared. x times a, which gives us plus ax. a times x, which gives us another one. And then plus a times a, which is a squared. And if you combine like terms, you get x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. That's the pattern. x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So if you can recognize this pattern, you can do some pretty quick foiling. This is where this is going, OK? So like an example of this, if I had x plus 6 squared, I know that this is going to give me x squared plus 12x plus 36. First and last term are very simple. They're just the first term squared and the last term squared. And then the middle term will be whatever this number is times x times 2, OK? That's what this pattern gives us. There's two other patterns that you need to be aware of. And if you don't remember them, that's fine, because you can always do FOIL there on the spot. No one's going to stop you. This is just if you want to try to increase your recognition speed. Do you feel uncomfortable with my breathing on this board? Because I do. I also feel kind of lightheaded. Here's the other patterns. Okay, here we go. Yes, a little bit of this. Absolutely. It's getting everywhere. Yeah, I like when that happens because then there's more work. Really, it's just, it just doesn't dry. Come on. All right, other patterns. There's the x minus a squared pattern, which you'll see the difference. Whoa! Did you see the difference? The minus, that's it. That's the only difference. So here is an example of what that would look like. We're going to do x minus 7 squared. x squared minus 14x plus 49. All right. Last pattern. Kind of a combination of the two. But gets pretty wonky. Siddharth, you fool. Have I taught you nothing? No. That is not true. Sid. And it pains me to see that. You know that's not true, Sid. Please Sid. tell me you know that's not true. Sid. He's winking. It's a joke, my friend. Yes. That we taught you, him to joke. You know it so well that you can joke about yes, it. Yes, that that's is very excellent. good. 2AB. That's right. Don't forget the 2AB. Sid never does. It is 100% true. Internet shortcut. You're just an internet shortcut. That's all you are. Then there's the x plus a times x minus a pattern. This is my favorite of all of them. x times x gives us x squared. Then we have plus ax. I'm going to put that down here. Plus ax, then we have minus ax, and then we have minus a squared. You can see here, 
plus ax and the minus ax will cancel out. So we just get x squared minus a squared. And there's a message on this, and we've got to fix this, Levi. Oh, man. Don't worry about it. What does that even mean? Internet shortcut. You're going to have to explain. Oh, Sid hasn't seen the shirts. Nice marker pocket. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it says nerdish. We like it. It's fun. This is called the difference of two squares pattern. It's called the difference of two squares because there's two squares. We're taking the difference, subtracting. That's why it's called that. Whenever you see two squares, you can just go ahead and take the difference. I mean, no. Whenever you see the difference being taken to two squares, you can factor it into the original pattern. So if you see x squared minus 25, you can say, oh, that's a square minus a square. This must be the x plus ax minus a pattern. And it is. x plus 5, x minus 5. All right. It works as long as the two things are square. So if I had something like x to the fourth minus 16, you'd say, well, they, that's not a square term. Yes, it is. If you're to the fourth power, you're still a square term because you can easily have your square root taken of you. The square root of x to the fourth is just x squared. So this is going to give us x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. And actually, we're not done. x squared minus 4 is another difference of two squares. So this can further be factored into x plus 2, x minus 2. So your factored form, your fully factored form, your triple F, as it were, is going to be these three things. Great. Factoring patterns. Dunzo. Now let's talk about factoring when it's not nice, easy patterns. All right. This is where things get messy. This is where limbs start falling off. Don't worry, the wound is cauterized. You'll be okay. You just won't have the limb anymore. Story of my life. Let's get this going. We're going to talk about the good stuff now. Not that this stuff wasn't good. This stuff is awesome. This next stuff, though, is even, it's even more awesome. Okay. I'll work my way over as it dries. It's drying. Gotta let it dry. You gotta let it dry. It's one thing I've learned in this business. Okay. Oh, see, that's why, because it was wet still. Jeez. Levi, this is a disaster. Um. Don't it's start. getting everywhere. It's getting everywhere, and I'm scared. Okay. There we go. Absolutely. Yes. Just shush, child. Brady will erase you. Okay. Okay. You guys like ASMR? There's no reason why I can't do it now all the time. No, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we can do it. Maybe from 9.30 to 11.30. Oh, uh, late night. Late night. ASMR sesh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's still... Right? Quite moist. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, now we're going to talk about factoring, which we kind of already started with. I was showing you some factoring patterns. Factoring is the opposite of foiling. Or you go backwards, backwards foiling. You unfoil it, take the foil off, and eat your leftovers. That's factoring right there. We, yeah, it's bad. X plus six times X minus two. It's gonna give us X squared plus four X minus 12. Don't worry, I'm a tutor. I know that, I didn't have to foil it. If you just saw this, we're trying to find a way to go back to here. Trying to factor it. All right, here's how you do it. Let's analyze where our numbers came from. Where did negative 12 come from? That came from the product of this number and this number, 6 and negative 2. They added together, I'm sorry, whoo, they multiply together to become negative 12. Where did 4 come from? Positive 4, as in the coefficient. 4x because there's an x and all that. The reason why we got positive 4 is we would have had plus 6x minus 2x. So positive 4 is the sum of those two things. So positive 6 and negative 2, they add together to make negative, I'm sorry, they add together to make positive 4. So they add to make this 
and they multiply to make this. And I'm talking about these two numbers in question right here. So you have to just recognize what do my two mystery numbers add and multiply to and work your way backwards from that, okay? Let me give you an example. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let's factor that. Well, one thing that I've been doing for a very long time is I like to put a little m and a little a next door to record what my two numbers have to multiply to, what, what they have to add to. So 6 is what they have to multiply to. I'm going to put a little 6 there. 5 is what they're going to have to add to. Now you're going to have to do either some mental math or trial and error. you got to think of two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So let me a couple different pairings of numbers that multiply to 6. you got 1 and 6. you got 2 and 3. 2 and 3 add to 5. Those are your two numbers. 2 and 3. All right, 2 and 3. So those are the two numbers that we end up putting inside the parentheses. All right, this is going to be x plus 2 because it's a positive 2, so we add it, and x plus 3. Factored. Done. Dunzo. Dunzo garbanzo beans. That's how factored it is. Let's do another one. Yeah, it'll be fun x squared, let's say, uh, I don't know, jeez, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, jeez, uh, yeah, yeah, why not, yeah, okay, plus 3x minus 10, plus 3x minus 10, so these things are going to multiply to negatron 10, they're going to add to positron 3, what numbers do that? They multiply to a negative number. Think about what two numbers multiply to negative numbers. You have to have a, po a positive and you have to have a negative in order for that to happen. You cannot get to a negative number by multiplying two positive numbers together or two negative numbers together. Not going to happen. They're both going to end up positive. So they have to be a positive and a negative number, and they have to add to positive 3. So 10. Let's break down, or negative 10 for that matter. Uh, what are the factors of 10? We got 1, we got 10, we got 2, we got 5. That's it. Can we put a negative in this somewhere, in one of these pairs, so that if you add them together, you get positive 3? The answer is yes. 2 and 5. If you make the 2 a negative 2, they're going to multiply to negative 10. They're going to add to positive 3. Those are your numbers right there. Right there. It's that easy. So we're going to have x minus 2, x plus 5. Exciting. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Any questions about this, Levi? What are we on on time so far? Ah. What, are we, what are we doing on time so far? We're doing fine. It doesn't matter. Fantastic. Great. If, uh, I got one other thing I want to show them. Do you want me to erase this? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. What about, fine. what about when it's something like this? <sighs> Wait. Wait just a second. Did I do this wrong? Yes, I did. It's minus 2. Here we go. What are we trying to factor this? There's a difference between this quadratic trinomial and the other quadratic trinomials that we've been factoring. The leading coefficient is not 1. The leading coefficient in all of these, 1, 1, 1. All right, pretty simple when the leading coefficient is 1. Because you know that your, your x terms inside both parentheses will just be x times x, x times x, blah, blah, blah. Now we have a 6x squared. So if you try to go a little too fast, you'll think, all right, well, I know that the term in front is going to be 6x and x, or will it be 3x and 2x? You don't know. There's a bunch of different ways that you could do guess and check here and put some other numbers in there. You'll eventually find it. But there is a way top down you can do that will get you to the answer. I'm going to show it to you right now. The best part is it's going to be completely free. Completely free. Not even slightly free. I don't like when things are just partially or just slightly free, almost free. Here's how it's going to happen. All right. The start of this, the start is going to be somewhat similar. We have an M and we have an A. All right. What they multiply to is not negative 2. What they multiply to is the product of this number and this number. The product of those two, which is negative 12. Now let's take a step back for a second. You actually were doing this before without even realizing it. Take a look at this. We said the product has to be 6. There was a 1 here 
that you don't even have to acknowledge because six times one gives you six anyway. Negative 10 times one gives you negative 10. So when the leading coefficient of fission is one, it doesn't matter, okay? But it shows up when it's not one. So you have to remember that. We have to multiply to negative 12. The adding is the same as it was before. It's the coefficient of the middle term, which is positive one. So we have to find two numbers that do those two things. I'm gonna say they're probably four and negative three. Okay, next difference. You do not jump straight into parentheses yet. Here's what you do first. You're gonna branch out this middle term into these two terms. You're gonna rewrite this uh, expression. We're gonna have six x squared like before, plus four x minus three x minus two. Okay, now let's talk about that for a sec. I did not fundamentally change the value of any of these terms. Because plus x is the same thing as plus 4x minus 3x. I did the opposite of what you normally are taught to do in math, which is you normally want to simplify. I just made it a little more complex. Com complex. Complex. Com apoplectic. I like that word. Apoplepsy. I don't know what that is. Um, so I've desimplified this a little bit. Now there are four terms, and here's what you're going to do. By the way, the order that you put these terms in, so I did positive 4, then negative 3. You could have done negative 3, positive 4. Order is not going to matter. Eventually, you're going to get the same answer uh, as you would have anyway. Here's where this is going. It is a method called factor by grouping. All right? I like to draw this little dotted line that groups together the first two terms and the second two terms. So this is factor by grouping. I'm going to write that up here. Factor by grouping. Yay! Ah. Is that okay if I do that on stream? Yeah, do it one more time now. Ah. Good. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're going to factor this separately. Let's look at the first grouping. 6x squared plus 4x. What do those two terms have in common? What can I take out of both of them? Well, they both have an x in there. I can't take out x squared because 4x doesn't have a fully formed x squared. It only has x. I can also take out 2. So let's do that. I'm going to erase what I had originally because it's kind of impinging on my current space and it's gonna make things confusing. And I don't want that. I like it when things are clean and neat and not confusing, they have to be clear. Okay, so we can take a two X out of both of these. What's left in parentheses? Well, three X plus two. Great. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. If this was factorable, which I can tell you that it was, it won't always be, but in this case I chose one that is factorable, you should be able to get the same factor in parentheses as you had before. So we should somehow also be able to pull out 3x plus 2 in this side. And let's see if that's possible. What needs to go out front to make this equivalent to what we had before? Well, we originally had negative 3x minus 2. So if we pull a negative 1 out of both of those, then we've achieved the same thing. Negative 1 times 3x plus 2 will give us those original things. We managed to have this symmetry here going on, which means it actually is factorable. And here's the best part. One of the factors is 3x plus 2. That much should be obvious. The other factor is what's hanging out front. We put those together. Okay, that's a 2x and that's a negative 1. So our two factors end up being 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. All right? All right, very exciting. And for those of you that are really thinking hard, if I had instead had our negative 3x first and then plus 4x here, what would have happened was I would have gotten 2x minus 1 as my factor that I pulled out of both sides first, and then 3x plus 2 would have been separated in front of both, and then I would put, put those together. That's what would happen. You're going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter what order you get them in. 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2, that is how you do it. Any questions? If not, I'm going to erase this. And uh, Leva, what are you doing today? Transitions. Oh, transitions. Yeah. Speaking of transitions, let me just uh, get going. Nah, just kidding. I'll be around for a little bit. Looks like there are no questions. No questions. So I will clean this. It might no lag questions. a little bit. That's okay. I'm yeah. honestly fine with that. I know. Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh. Huh? Ah. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, this definitely just... Um, mm. The liquidity... 
liquidity. Ooh, you know what we could talk about? We could talk about... Oh, What's wait, going no, on it's over here? It'll pop up in a sec. We'll talk about it. It'll okay. be exciting. Yeah, this takes a long time to dry. Could we be using too much liquid, different kind of liquid? No, this is just straight water instead of uh, the cleaning fluid. Oh. Before. It's cheaper, and it works, honestly, just as well. It just... Hey, Alta Ipsum, what's that? It's our sponsor, Levi. Uh, Alta Ipsum is one of our sponsors. We are the other sponsor, because um, we do private tutoring. But Alta Ipsum means summit yourself in Latin. Yes. Uh, and it basically is just a way to make yourself better. So if you're ready to uh, buckle down and study for stuff, you can organize all of that stuff in one place, which is Alta Ipsum. You can use it on your phone and your laptop. You can set up, and it allows you to track your grades, to track your classes, other uh, commitments you have, extracurriculars, studying, all those things. So you can put in a term paper that's due in three weeks, and it'll set up a study schedule for you so you can say, well, I'll research here, and then I'll write here and here and here and here. Um, and it's super useful. It allows you to executively organize your life. Yeah. Um, speaking of executively organizing your life, you should be watching Nerdish as often as you can, doing SAT and ACT prep pretty regularly if you want these skills to stick. And you might as well use Alt Ipsum to do that. You can color code it. Make us whatever color you want. Maybe like a, like a kind of gross greenish yellow that reminds you of vomit. Or a nice royal purple. I think that's what we prefer. Uh, and the last thing is that it's free for a month. So just give it a shot. If you don't like it, get rid of it. But if you like it, keep it. Try it for a month. You might notice that your studying and scheduling becomes a lot more streamlined, like a fish. Have fun up there. Thanks, Bird. Okay, Call. we are doing... Did you give me a marker at some point? No. Okay. We're doing number nine here. Wow. I got it, at least. Okay. Which choice most effectively sets up the examples given at the end of the sentence? So, this is a transition question in... The, eh, you know what? I'll do number 11 first. That's a little bit more transition specific. Oh, boy. Yeah? No. Yeah. Okay. Number 11. We have, which choice most clearly ends the passage with a restatement of the writer's primary claim? Okay. So when we say transitions, it's going to be everything. So it'll be into this thing, or it'll be out, you know, into this last thing, or into the beginning, or it'll be a transition between things. It could be a single word. It could be several sentences. We're not... Sh we, we don't know. Right, Bird? We absolutely don't know. It'd be a crime to think that we did. And we don't. So leave us alone. Okay. Number 11. Which choice most clearly ends the path passage with a restatement of the writer's primary claim? This is definitely a good thing that this is the last question for this passage because this is hard. This requires you to know everything about the passage beforehand because you really need to know the writer's primary claim. Now, when we're doing this, you want to be very specific. You, you have to identify what is the writer's primary claim and you need to stick to that because this transition here is basically transitioning out of the piece, right? So you have to stick to your guns. In this case, I think they happen to be librarians. So let's look at the, the given one, so A. We have, like books, librarians have been around for a long time. Okay, off the bat, that's a ridiculous statement. Like books, librarians have been around for a long time. I think that's really funny. It, it's a little odd to say that. Not necessarily a reason to mark this wrong, but it's a little odd. So, like books, librarians have been around for a long time, but the internet is extremely useful for many types of research. Okay, bunch of things wrong here. I don't know why the word but is in here. That seems sort of irrelevant for the two ideas that you're connecting. So, librarians have been around for a while, but the internet is extremely useful for many types of research. Okay, but the main idea of the passage was that librarians are helping people learn research skills. So this is, it's one, a non sequitur, two, silly, and three, does not clearly end the passage with a restatement of the main idea. So A is out, then we have B. So B is, although their roles have diminished significantly. Okay, I like that start because they did talk about Library. Well, hmm, we'll get to that. Although their roles have diminished significantly, librarians will continue to be employed by public libraries for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, 
my problem with this one is that they're jumbling some stuff here. So the terminology is not quite correct. They start the passage by talking about, oh, by the way, for those of you who are watching who don't know where this test is from, our overlay is test, the SAT practice test two. It's linked down below in current tests or under current tests. You can just click that and you get a link to the test. We're on the writing section number clearly 11. Okay, so I don't like the word roles here. So the roles have diminished significantly. I don't, I'm not a fan of that because the beginning of the passage is where you might get that sense, but they're not saying that what librarians do has become less. What they're saying is that fewer and fewer librarians are being employed. So that's, that's a misrepresentation of the idea here. So therefore it's unsupported. It's not the main idea of the passage. B is out. Please let me know if you have any questions. C. The growth of electronic information has led to a diversif diversification of librarians' skills and services, positioning them as, a savvy re as savvy resource specialists for patrons. Okay. I like that, actually, because that's, that is the passage. They're saying that librarians have a lot of different, or they're learning more and more skills to go along with the changes in technology, and they're not losing skills, certainly. They, they're still doing all the normal old book, you know, ISBN number garbage, but actually it's an incredibly useful system. But they're also picking up these other skills when they're training and then they're training other people for it. So I like C, I don't have any problem with it, but again, we're not done because in this section, we are proving three wrong every single time. So let's look at D. However, given their extensive training, given their extensive training and skills, librarians who have been displaced by budget cuts have many other possible avenues of employment. Okay, I could see how you could pretzel yourself into thinking this answer is correct because they're saying that, oh, li librarians have lots of useful skills and a lot of librarians are being laid off and things like that. So you can say, oh, well, then there are many other possible avenues of employment for them. But that's not the main point of the article. You might be able to infer that, but that's, this is not an inference question. Okay, so I don't like um, other possible avenues here, that's, nah, I don't like it. So D is out, what do we say? D is out, and B is out. So C is the answer I like. Please let me know if you have any questions on that. This is a, tra this is a, what, it is, what is it called, Bird? Transition, transition yes. question. In this case, we're just coming out of something, we just have to identify the main idea of the passage, prove three wrong. Let's go on to, ah, you know what? Let's move on. Okay, we can do this. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Okay, so actually number 12, right here. As I erase this, you can read that to yourself if you'd like. And if you wouldn't like, don't do it. It's far be it from me to make you do something you don't want to do. Okay, so you can tell just looking at the answer choices immediately what's going on here. We have for instance, however, similarly, and then in here we have on the other, or on one hand. This is very clearly a transition question. In this case, it's a single word. There is a very, 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 very specific approach to this type of question. You have to identify the two ideas that you're connecting and then pick the best word, word to work in there. Do not just start throwing in each one and say, does this sound nice? That is your last line of defense but it's not a good idea for starting out because you're, you're just going on only your gut feeling. Do not only go on your gut feeling. Your gut feeling should always, will always be there and you should listen to it, but you shouldn't only rely on that. Point yourself in the right direction. In this case, let's identify our two ideas. So the first idea is going to be before, on the other hand in this case, and then the other one is going to be after. So let's read the first sentence, that'll be the idea. The first time I visited the Art Institute of Chicago, I expected to be impressed by its famous large paintings. Okay, so I think the important thing here is I expected to be impressed by its famous large paintings. It's basically that whole thing. That's idea one, is my, that's my guess. Now, we're not reading this at all. We're not reading on the other hand. We're not putting in our brain. We're just moving on and finding that second idea. Second idea is I couldn't wait to view painter George Surratt's 10 foot wide a Sunday, in, a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. Jatte? La Grande Jatte. La Grande Jatte in its full size. Okay, 
And then let's keep going a little bit. It took me by surprise then. Okay, so uh, that's moving on, right? It took me by surprise then, because up here we said I expected to be impressed, this expectation, and then a surprise down here. But we're not there. Our first idea is I expected to be impressed. Second idea that we are connecting right now is I couldn't wait to see this guy's 10 foot wide painting. Okay? That's a big painting. That's a very big painting. Therefore, these two ideas are very similar, right? I expected to be impressed by its famous large paintings. So it seems like these two words are pretty important. And then a 10 foot wide painting. Those are very similar ideas, which means, mm, let's see what we can get rid of. I would say, however, doesn't make any sense there. However indicates contrast, and there doesn't seem to be any contrast here. Okay, now we need to think about the size of these two ideas. Not the size, well, that's actually a poor choice of words, unfortunately, in this case. But we have, I expected to be impressed by these large paintings. That's a very general idea. And then we get a little more specific. I couldn't wait to see George Seurat's 10 foot wide painting, that painting in particular. So I don't think similarly works. These are similar ideas, but they're not at the same level. We have a general one, and then we have a more specific one. So using similarly to connect them doesn't work. I hope that makes sense, because that's actually a pretty high level thought process there. Unless it's not for you, and then it's easy, great. And then on one hand, okay, we could say that, but then we would have to read what's going on after this, right? Then our two ideas would be afterwards. On one hand, I do this, on the other, I do this. So we need some sort of differentiation there. So let's figure that out. On one hand, I couldn't wait to see George Surratt's big painting. Um, it took me by surprise then when, okay, so this doesn't quite work with the comparison we're trying to make. We need something like on one hand, on the other hand. We don't have that, so I don't like on one hand. So A is out, and B, I think, does make sense. General idea, for instance, specific idea, okay? You could put these in and see how they feel, but similarly might come up and be nice. You might get confused with however, could be any of these, okay? Trust your gut feeling, don't start with it. Okay, seems like there are no questions. Hmm. This, is, this is transitions. It's not a super hard question type to understand in general, but it's very, very common, one, and where most people have trouble. It's pretty easy to, to iron out most of the punctuation and grammar rules. And then the other half of the section is context stuff. And the biggest version of context questions is transition questions. We have these, which are just straight up transition phrases, just little dinky things like number 12. Or we have those bigger ideas that in, you know, incorporate um, more complex stuff. Both of them still take the same approach. Identify the two things you're trying to connect looking for whatever thing connects them and you know whatever line needs to be there. Is it contrast? Is it big to small? Is it small to big to generalize? Is it a similarity? Is it um, a list of things? It could, be, it could be so many different things, but the words will show you where to go. Again, prove three wrong. Okay. Braid, you have a little more time, right? Oh, right, two minutes. Okay, so, yeah, a little, I guess. I can stand up there and look pretty. Yes, please do. Uh, Could you turn off the overlay, actually? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Very nice. Okay, please ask your questions in the Discord or in the chat, or on the comments section of Facebook, or YouTube, whatever you want to do, we will answer them. But Brady's got to go in the next two minutes, and if you got no questions for me, then I'm probably going to head out, too. You should at least get until 9. Yeah, uh, that's fine. I'll go a couple more minutes. Yeah. But I want to sign off with you. No, I mean, I could give you my portion of the sign-off right now, and you could hold on to that and just wait for eight minutes and then give your portion. Hmm. That has to work. It has to. Yeah, hey, whoa. Man, man, 
We're going to start a new schedule next week. Oh, that's true. More information to come, but we will not be streaming as often as we have been. Uh, we're going to be narrowing it down to Tuesday to Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week. Um, it seems like we probably make the same amount of uh, or effect, create the same amount of effect uh, if we just focus a little more on individual streams rather than just going for quantity. That's our goal here. Um, you got anything to add? Mm, 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 that sounds mm. that sounds good. Mm, mm. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or if you guys want to air, oh man, I gotta go. That? That's my alarm. You have a child to get. I have a child. Very nice. I've gotta go get my child. I don't think anybody knows who he is. Yeah. Well, then it's just a weird voice. Yes. That's fine. It is a weird voice. That's true. That's how the man chooses to talk. He's born that way. Okay, it's just me and you. So we can talk about whatever you want if you have questions. If you don't have questions, don't ask them. If you do have questions, please ask them. If you don't have questions, make them up, ask them. But otherwise, I'm going to sign off because it's not super late. You know, we're not super close to the end of the scheduled stream. But if nobody's on, then I don't want to just stand here making up math problems. We have, uh, we got stuff scheduled next week. You can check it out in the, in the schedule down there. But it seems like we're pretty good for it tonight. Unless anybody wants to say hi or ask a question. I'll give it a couple of seconds and then I'm going to go. Up to you. Okay. Well, in that case, we will see you next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Have a good night, everybody.